it seems like we are in the era of AI kind of being ushered into the mainstream consciousness. Like everybody knows AI. Like you can DM an AI on any social media platform. No, I don't think I do want to grok something. The reality now is that AI is everywhere. From commercials to scrolling on social media, half the posts, at least, that you're going to see will feature an AI-generated voice or an AI-generated image. Uh, Just recently, a meme went viral of, like, time travelers going back in time to, like, stop viral memes, and that was all a generative AI. Hey, Elon, check this out. You posted this meme? Yes. So off the bat, we definitely need to comment on the elephant in the room that this is really ugly. Like, I don't know how anyone could enjoy watching this. Now, look, I am not a graphics Andy. I think that if something has like a stylistic vision and it doesn't want to just like look like, you know, something like Invincible or something like X-Men 97, you know, like if you want to try a weirder art style, go ahead. I mean, Smiling Friends is kind of also a really ugly show, in my opinion. Um, But it's, you know, it's popping off because people just enjoy the show and it's like a unique art style. This is the exception to that. It's just ugly. Like, these people's faces are constantly just, like, changing. And, okay, so what is exactly going on? So AOC is questioning this guy in Congress and... He because he posted a meme on Twitter that called her stupid but hot. Um, so I guess that's illegal in this sitcom. Um, okay, sure, that's a setup, I guess. And you posted this comment, yes. So Elon Musk just landed from space, he's still dressed in his astronaut garb and he replied being the gooner he is to this picture of AOC agreeing that she's stupid and hot and he's also on trial or maybe one of them is each other's lawyer I'm not particularly sure about the specifics of what's going on here I still don't understand why AOC is questioning these men for like what is this i what what's the conflict here guys elon musk is a gooner like the people that made this are the people that like elon musk so far you're not making him look good you're making him look kind of weird mr musk call me elon Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What what just happened? They're in love now? You know what's funny is they even they stole this bit from like an an actually funny video with effort put into it. I'm breaking all the rules. I'm breaking all the rules. Well, I guess uh, we might make some mistakes. Who knows? So on top of this video being ugly generative AI that is stealing images and also AI voice, they couldn't even make an original joke. Like this is a stolen joke on top of everything else that is stolen about this piece of garbage. When you wrote true, were you referring to this or this? Uh, both. It's because of him that millions saw my post, including the mother of my child. All right, let's be so for real here. Why does Elon Musk look so young? I'm pretty sure that the people that were putting the prompts into the text bubbles to create this were probably asking, like, like, like describing ages or, or like general appearances. So they were requesting that this make Elon Musk look a lot younger than he does. Now, look, I don't want to bash on anyone's appearance. But Elon Musk is, like, visibly old. Like, his face is, like, wrinkled, and he just looks very old. I mean, he looks older than he is. Um, So I don't know why they're, like, giving him this, like, Justin Bieber, like, babyface vibe. Um, But, you know, to each their own, I guess. 
What does this dude mean that because Elon Musk replied true, the mother of his child saw this post? So what? Did you what? Did you like get divorced and lose custody? And she follows Elon Musk on Twitter, I guess. And so like she saw it. What does that have to do with anything? Like what? And why are they there in court? I'm not going to redo that. I'm not. <laughs> Mothers of my children, so I have two. Don't you have enough kids? I have a hands-on approach to the world's population crisis. You'll never get your hands on me. So, okay, now Elon Musk is, is distraught because his multiple baby mamas have seen him gooning over AOC and also insulting her and objectifying her. And he doesn't like that. Um, and then somehow, for why does AOC say, uh, don't you have enough kids? He didn't say he was going to have another kid. He just said that the, his baby mamas saw the tweet. Why does that tell AOC that Elon Musk is planning on procreating again? <laughs> uh, so Okay, so whatever. And then one of his kids throws a baby ball, bottle at AOC. And then AOC catches it. Pretty cool. Good job. And she she says, "You'll never get your hands on me like a like a Scooby Doo villain, dude." I, was anybody? You know what? Actually, I take that back. If this was real, I if and if I was AOC, I would actually probably be concerned that Elon Musk wanted to touch me. Um. So you know what? That makes sense. I can understand why, you know, where the AI might have gotten that from. Um, and that makes sense. So, so far, actually, this is maybe more accurate to what this would be like than I thought, though. I still don't know uh, what the situation is. Why is why are they like being subpoenaed by Congress? Subpoenaed. That's not the right use of that word. Why are they being, you know, whatever, bro, you get what I mean. I'm boycotting you. Then go yourself the new norm the first animated sitcom on x that wasn't very good elon musk's ai voice is like replicating what elon musk sounds like but then the aoc voice i that doesn't sound like aoc i don't know if that's just me but i i, I don't even think they used an aoc ai voice i think that's just like a random girl number three ai voice and then also, it, I, I just don't get how you could enjoy watching this. Nothing happens. None of the dialogue makes sense. The situation doesn't make sense. And then, like, Elon Musk is like, go, go yourself. And then, like, everybody's, like, cheering and taking pictures. And, like, nothing happened. Like, we still have no clue why this was going on or where they were or what was what they were doing or what they were talking about besides the stupid tweet and also the show is called the new norm and the dude at the beginning that made the original tweet is norm why did we not get a resolution to his story if this is about norm it's not about elon musk and aoc um i assume like norm you know is supposed to be like an audience surrogate you know you, norm's a normal person amongst these politicians and billionaires. Um, but no, we stop. We don't see Norm again after his wife growls at him or his ex-wife, I, I would imagine. That's cool. <laughs> Good luck with it. I hope this space really opens up and gives you some freedom to move and create. Let's take TV down. I might even have to get in on it. <laughs> it looks good. No, it doesn't look good. And what do you mean, get in on it? Are you an angel investor? You, you're going to invest into the industry that is AI TV? A and what does that mean? You're going to hire people to type prompts? You're going to give other... What are you going to give the new norm TV money so they can produce more episodes of the new norm TV, which costs a total of $0 to produce? <laughs> like, what? And take TV down. You would rather watch this over Breaking Bad, The Bear, Westworld, Rick and Morty, Suits? You are not firing Mike goddamn Ross. Now get the hell out of my office.
Now, speaking of Rick and Morty, the reason that I got inspired to make this video is that I was writing a different video about Elon Musk's cameos in TV, which I'm still making. So subscribe if you're interested in something like that. And you think I'm funny and I'm funny. So you better subscribe. But anyways, I Googled Rick and Morty and lo and behold this. Now, at first, I thought that this was like actually straight up like Adobe officially having this in their stock image library and letting you license it. But what it actually seems like is Adobe has this in-house eBay for art, art, and you can open up your own marketplace like Mercari or Depop. So this person had an AI prompt of Rick and Morty and had the AI generate an image, and then he made it licensable through Adobe. So this, I feel like this opens up so many questions, like if you really think about it, because if someone were to sue, would you sue Adobe for allowing this to be licensable through their platform, or would you sue this person? And who would sue them? Because technically they're profiting off of the property of Warner Brothers, right? So shouldn't Warner Brothers take legal action because it's like technically bootleg merch, right? But then who is it like if Warner Brothers were to do that, right? And win that lawsuit, who would pay for it? Would the person that set up this marketplace on Adobe pay for it? Would Adobe pay for it? Or would the people who own the AI, so like Chat, GPT, DALI, OpenAI, whatever, like would they have to pay? because they're not technically profiting off of this specific image of Rick and Morty being licensed. Like, I don't think some of the profit is going back to OpenAI or whoever. But at the same time, like they're knowing, like they know that the AI can do stuff like this and they know that people are profiting off of it and they're profiting off of that algorithm in another way, right? So I don't know, like that's a whole can of worms and I am not an expert on the legality of all of this. There was like an old lawsuit with like that monkey selfie because PETA was like, well, the monkey owns the rights to that image, not the photographer. And it was like a whole thing. And the verdict doesn't really answer the question of like who would have ownership in AI. So it's kind of still like something that people are uh, talking about. And there's this really interesting Forbes article of these dudes kind of discussing it and talking about, like, is the prompt of writing something enough human intention to classify it as their art? Or because AI is not, like, sentient, can the AI own what it's creating? Well, no, because also it's all, like, stolen art. Like, the AI is just, it's like an amalgamation of other images that it's getting from all over the internet on, like, Reddit and DeviantArt and whatnot. So it's like stealing from working class artists and it's stealing from like Disney and Warner Brothers. So to me, it's like it's huge. I mean, it's like the implications of this are massive and it's just like allowed to exist right now. And no one is really seeming to want to do anything about it. And I don't know, like it's it's just weird. That's so ironic, too, because when I looked up monkey selfie to get the picture, at least two of the images and the first set of results I got were AI that were copying other pictures, real pictures of people with monkeys that were also in the results. And it was like clear that that's what the AI stole them from. And they're just on the top page of Google. We're cooked. I don't know, this one's a little more complicated because basically it is one frame and it's starring Tom Hanks and Robin Wright, stars of Forrest Gump, reuniting with director of Forrest Gump, Robert Zemeckis. Now, did we need another movie from Robert Zemeckis? Probably not. Um, did we need a movie filled with AI from Robert Zemeckis? Probably not. The thing is, I feel like the movie actually does sound kind of interesting. It's just going to be like one frame the whole time going through, I think, like hundreds of years and ending with showing this couple's like entire relationship. Now, I don't know if Robert 
or not Robert. Sorry. I, I don't know if Tom Hanks and Robin Wright are like, were like on set and the AI is messing with their faces or if they are completely AI. I can tell though that their voices are AI. Oh, if you like, you could spend the rest of the night here. Now, the thing is, if they both, consented to this like both of the actors consented to their voices being generated by ai and their likeness being generated by ai is it actually stealing anything like yeah sure it's uninspired and human teams could do it i think that's where the controversy would come in is that you're you're like stealing jobs from special effects artists i don't know the day-to-day of like what visual effects artists do on movies exactly But I imagine that you could make this movie without AI, but it would take like a lot of time and a lot of money. So this is just kind of like cutting that out and probably saving the studio like thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars on lengthy special effects work. Is that good or bad? I don't know. I would say that it's probably not good. I don't think Taking jobs in the arts is what we should want AI to do, but I'll get that get into that in a little bit later. I still have another thing I want to talk about, and that is this Toys R Us ad, which feels like so encapsulating of what this is becoming. So I'm just shittily superimposing myself over this Toys R Us AI ad because I don't want to force you to watch any more of this shitty content. Um, I've I've forced you to watch a lot of AI stuff today. I apologize. So it's just going to keep replaying behind me. You can see how ugly it is. All of this stuff is AI generated imagery. And it is a Toys R Us ad. And for those who don't know, Toys R Us is actually it's been like popping back up in Macy's stores. But on top of that, they're actually opening 24 Toys R Us stores uh, throughout. I think they want to do it by the end of this year. So this timing seems very on purpose to me. They're going to try and get buzz going as they open 24 new Toys R Us, full Toys R Us stores. Now, I have a lot of mixed feelings about this. The ad itself, I hate. It is ugly. It is lifeless. It is soulless. It is stupid. It is definitely stealing art from people. That being said, I have a lot of nostalgia for Toys R Us. I remember like going with my parents when I was a kid and like looking at Ben 10 and Pokemon toys. And I was in high school when they closed down and me and my, my boys, we went to Toys R Us and bought a bunch of stuff for like 90% off some stuff that is still on my awesome shelf of cool stuff in the back. Um, I'm really good at wasting my money. I was like making a minimum wage as a busser uh, at a Mexican restaurant and spending my entire paycheck on fucking action figures, dude. I was a mo- I, w- I wish I had saved my money, man. Anyways, though, you can see how ugly this is. Um, I just, I don't know. It sucks to me because this is like a zombie, bro. It's like a corporation that has come back to life and they're just already bombarding us with these horrible things. I it, This ugly, ugly ad. And it sucks because I was like kind of excited to like go to Toys R Us again. And I think that in general, it's like good for kids to have places that are dedicated to them. And we've been seeing that kind of go away in person and um, in real life. Um, I'm an after school teacher for elementary grade kids, and they all just use the Internet. And, you know, there's no Toys R Us. They've gotten rid of play places in fast food restaurants, there is like less family friendly restaurants, though obviously there's still plenty. Um, But you you know what I mean, just in general. But on the internet, the issue is like these kids, like these six to 10 to 12 year old kids are just using Twitter and Instagram and TikTok. They they don't have like dedicated spaces anymore, like, like Moshi Monsters and Club Penguin. And they're like, we just saw they're shutting down CartoonNetwork.com. And so I was I was happy about the idea of Toys R Us coming back because even though it's an American corporation and we hate that, it is also a space that is dedicated to the happiness of children, which I just think is like a good thing for a society to have. I think that everything has just become so lifeless and colorless. 
uh, you know, like all fast food restaurants have kind of become this like same corporate stock standard square buildings. And it just sucks. And so I was excited, like maybe that, you know, we're coming back to that. But this this makes me kind of feel more negative about it. Like this is just a really soulless thing to do from a corporation that maybe went bankrupt for reasons that were not entirely their fault. And to come back and do something like this, maybe you did deserve to go bankrupt. Maybe you should not come back. Um, I don't know. That's just a thought. Think about it and get back to me. And Elon Musk, uh, let me know what you think. So, yeah, if I was perhaps a philosophy professor, I could probably answer some of these questions better. But I just think it's so interesting how we are in this new age of AI being ushered into the public eye and being used everywhere. And it's crazy that there's still a bunch of stuff I didn't talk about in this video, like Late Night with the Devil like all of these other things that AI is being used in, like I barely scratched the surface of all of the big scandals that AI have gone in on. I mean, I've only used pretty recent ones and it's just, I don't like it. And for me, I think that the main issue with AI above all else is why would you want it? Like, it seems to me that for a lot of Gen X and millennials, especially on the kind of X AI sphere, it's it's almost this like rebellious movement for them where they think that they are pushing back on the man or or something. And like and if you look at the replies on any AI video, like it's all the same. It's like older people being like, wow, well, you know, this is great. We're going to change the world. And it's like, why? Why do you want that? So you can have more time to do spreadsheets at a boring office job like art is the most human thing I think ever. Um, the process of creating art is personal and human and vulnerable. It's love and it's trauma and it's pain and it's lived experiences and memories and dreams. And AI has none of those. I feel like the enjoyment of art, when it truly comes down to it, is to experience life through someone else. And AI has not experienced life. It has not experienced anything so even if AI could get to a point where it was somehow generating its own product, it was not stealing and gaining information from other real working artists stuff, it would still not be appealing because it's not a human experience that I'm getting to witness. And I just I don't know why you would want that. I don't know like why it's 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 similar to me. It reminds me of like the Eminem thing that just happened recently where like all the millennials were like, hmm. Eminem is back and Gen Z cannot handle Slim Shady. And it's like, yeah, we can. Uh, we like I Eminem was on the radio when I was growing up. I'm 23 years old. I don't know why they think that like only millennials and Gen X would know or appreciate Eminem. Um, but it's like it seems like a similar thing to me where like Gen X people are like, ah, I love AI. And these young people think AI is bad, but they're stupid and I'm right. And it's like, even if you were right why, why would you want this? It just doesn't seem appealing at all to me. And I don't get how anyone could find it appealing. I don't know why you would want to cut the humanity out of art um, and take jobs and steal and be sexist to AOC. And I don't like the worst, most confusing part about this rebellious vibe to it that is kind of forming on X or Twitter is why you think that the motherfucker that cameoed in Rick and Morty and Iron Man 2 and the Big Bang Theory and Machete is the one that is like you get to push back on the industry that is TV. I'm washing dishes. <laughs> well, I was on the turkey line, but I got demoted for being too generous with the gravy. <laughs> Elon Musk loves TV, bro. He wants to be in more stuff. Um, it's very clear that he likes cameoing and he wants to act. So I don't know why you think that like Shoving Elon Musk into AI sitcoms is like pushing back against the TV industry. If anything, you're just like propping him up to get back to to where he wants. Right. Which is what you hate. Um, I don't know. It just seems like a pretty big level of like cognitive disconnect in a lot of areas to support AI and to look up to Elon Musk in this kind of crusade. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say about that. If you enjoyed watching, please do like, comment and subscribe. Feel free to tell me how stupid I am because Elon Musk is the smartest guy ever. 
and stay tuned for my family vlog to the Rainbow Monkey Island. This has been a Hippo Overwatch production.